Hello everybody, my name is Lewis. I'm not Primrose Kitten, uh, but she's allowed me to come onto her channel so I can give you some advice about how you can get a grade nine in GCSE physics. So Primrose Kitten and I have done some videos together last year. She's also been in some of my videos which are on my website. And I suppose what I've been doing is making loads of videos that cover A-level physics, and I've made even more videos, about 350 videos, that cover pretty much everything you need to know for your GCSE physics course. And um, what I'm gonna really do in this video is just explain some of the things that could help you get to a grade nine for GCSE physics. Even if you don't get a grade nine, it can maybe help you go from a grade six to a grade seven, or even a grade four to a grade five, because a lot of the stuff I'm talking about is things that your teachers tell you anyway, but from my experience when I've been teaching students and actually getting them to kind of get the A stars and the highest grades, there are three things that I think they can, that all of you can do to really improve your chances of understanding the subject. Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to know what is going to be in the exam. Not the particular questions, but just which bits of the science course you need to understand. Now, to get the best, um, kind of most up-to-date thing, you need to know which exam board you're doing, and then you need to download the full specification. Now this is written for teachers, it's pretty boring, and there are some other guides available. There's ones that I've written, the ones that uh, Primrose Kitten have written, but basically you need a checklist. So as you're revising, you can tick off that you've covered every part of that course specification. What you can then do is working independently, and maybe asking other people for help, like your teachers, but you can then start to identify the bits that you find particularly tricky. It might be transformers when you're looking at electromagnetism. It might be looking at Newton's laws. Once you've identified what's difficult, you then need to spend a bit more time working on those areas. And I'm not talking about just making beautiful notes and highlighting things, because that doesn't really actually help you learn the physics. But there are things um, that you can use. So this one here is a fantastic book. I bought this with my own money. Um, so Primrose Kitten is a series editor for a load of these workbooks. And Helen and Alon, fantastic people who've written so many great resources. And the advantage to this book here is that it doesn't just have questions, but it also has some revision as well. So you can revise the content that you need to know and then have a go at some questions. So resources like this or other textbooks, you need to sit down and you need to read those books to actually understand the science. Again, uh, Primrose Kitten has got videos about physics and I've got a huge amount more at gcsephysicsonline.com on my website. Again, just a bit of a shameless plug. But there are resources that you basically need to go to once you've identified the bits of the course that you find really difficult. However, if you know um, everything it says in that specification and you just answer those questions, that won't get you more than 40% of the marks in the exam because a lot of the exam is about how you apply your knowledge to new or different situations. And the best way to get good at answering exam questions is to answer as many exam questions as possible. And this is where you can start to use past papers. So for example, if you're in England and you're doing AQA, you need to be looking at the AQA past papers from 2018, 2017, 2016, 2015. And in actual fact, when we go back far enough, there was a slightly different course that was taught. Now that means that some of the questions won't be relevant for the GCSE physics that you're doing this year, but that doesn't matter, because if you know what's in the specification, then you'll realise that some questions maybe aren't applicable to you. However, there's only so many past papers that AQA have done, but if you're doing stuff in England, then actually why not look at OCRA and OCRB or Edexcel? If you actually see how many different exam boards there are doing GCSE content, and actually you soon realise that probably about 80% of that content is exactly the same, then the more exam boards past papers you go and have a go at, the better you're going to get at physics. And I know as a teacher, what really helped my students was just doing question after question after question. But the other thing that past papers have, and this is often what students tend not to look at until you get to A-level, are the examiner's reports. So when the exam goes out, you've got your past paper, there'll be a mark scheme, and sometimes it's a little bit difficult to follow the mark scheme, but there's also a third document written about that exam, which has been written afterwards by all the people who marked that paper. And that then gives uh, common mistakes that lots of students made. So when you're marking your work, you can see that, OK, it's a difficult question, but actually everybody in the country found it difficult, or these were the common mistakes. And if you read that mark scheme, along with your past paper and the examiner's report, then you really start to understand what the people who mark your paper are actually looking for. 
So past papers will really help you have a good understanding and there's only so many questions they can ask about kinetic energy. There are only so many calculations they will give you about momentum and the more past papers you do for all of your subjects, the better you'll get at answering exam questions. Now the third thing um, that can really help you go from, and this is really the, for students who are wanting to get that grade nine who are maybe thinking about doing physics at A-level, is this book here. So this is by Isaac Physics and I must admit that um, partly I'm involved with this because I made some videos to support this book, so I'm a bit biased, but also I appreciate that if you have this book, it is difficult to get used to when you first start. Okay, so um, Isaac Physics is run by the University of Cambridge. There's millions of pounds of government funding to get people like you better at physics. And originally the project was aimed at A-level to prepare people for university, but they did this book as well. And this is just question after question after question, um, and it is amazing. And I know that the students that I've taught who've used this, actually got used to it, they e they've actually found the past papers a bit too easy because they were prepared to such a high level. So if you want to get your mathematical ability where it needs to be, this is a book for you. Now the books cost one pound uh, from the Isaac Physics website, but you don't even need the book. All you need to do is go to their website, um, and then you can find loads and loads of questions that will basically, you can get them self-marked. Now the problem is, if you don't know the right answer, it doesn't give you a solution of how to get the right answer. But what you can do is you can look in the book or you can just do the questions online, write out your notes on a piece of paper, show you're working out as you would do in any other question. And then on the Isaac Physics website, you type in the correct answer and that then tells you if you're correct or not. And I guarantee that if you spend you know, from today onwards, doing questions on this, maybe even just 10 minutes of questions a day, every day. If you did every question in this book, then I pretty much guarantee that you would get a grade nine at GCSE, because this is slightly higher level than most of the work that actually happens in your exam. The other thing that I did uh, last summer was I made 92 videos on their website. So when you go to the question, if you're not quite sure about the way to approach it, there are a couple of tabs that you can click. Hint number one uh, goes through some of the physics, and hint two is a video that I made where I again explain the physics and I show you a worked example. So there are 92 worked examples on the Isaac Physics website. So the main things are, first of all, know what's gonna be in the exam by downloading the specification and using that as a tick list as you're learning your stuff. Secondly, do as many past papers as possible. And thirdly, if you want to get a grade nine, and you're maybe working at a grade seven or grade eight at the moment, if you just get onto this and just persevere, work independently, this is what will really help you get to those highest grades. Don't forget, of course, um, that uh, Primrose Kitten has made thousands of questions. Again, they're gonna help you just kind of get that good base of knowledge. So you can go to her website um, and sign up to get those questions. You can also go to my website, which is gcsephysicsonline.com. And for less than 10 pounds, you get full access to over 350 videos and over 500 multiple choice questions as well. So I hope something I've said um, will help you. If you want to get a grade nine, then it is achievable. They are not impossible grades, but it really comes down to the amount of independent work that you just get on with. Not forgetting, of course, if you do get stuck, you can go and speak to your teachers. Maybe not in lessons, but when you start study leave, your teachers have got all this free time and they're just gonna be sat around their classrooms. And it's really down to you to maybe go into your, to, you know, go and meet your teacher with a list of things that you say, I've done this question, I'm, but I'm stuck on this bit. Don't just say, I don't understand physics. You've got to have specific questions, arrange a time and meet with your teacher and they should be able to help you get the, the highest grades that you really deserve. So until then, um, thank you very much and I hope your exams go well. Thank you.